Thank you for staying with us. Now, the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, is set to with the big stick in its effort to sanitize the foreign exchange markets. The CBN has announced that it's found grave infractions, gross abuse, and insignificant non-compliance with market regulators by re operators in the foreign exchange segments. The revelation followed a forensic review conducted by a reputable independent firm, which was commissioned by the Apex Bank. The central bank said it would apply appropriate sanctions against the violations in those in collaboration with relevant agencies. Tony, this, um, as of yesterday, it was 1,300 naira at the parallel market. <sighs> 1,300 naira. Somebody, um, Chris Kende one who said it, that some Nigerians, they prefer to get their tickets in Ghana, mm -hmm. Republic of Benin, Benin, to travel out and getting it here. Because, that is because when you look at the exchange rates. It's killing. Well, let's be realistic. It's killing. And this one is in circulation in this country. It's killing. I will be happy, truly, if the CBN government can actually do something. Be it's not, I mean, if you have kids ab abroad who are schooling, you know, oh. that's when you feel the, you know, oh. you feel, or you're traveling. Oh. You just, you know, I mean, or healthcare. This, sh uh, or health, which is the most important. Yeah, the most important. You know, I pray truly that it's not just rhetoric. Let's do it. We know the people who are involved in this. They're in Nigeria, and they're just a minute few. We know them now. They're not bigger than the system. They control what is happening, you know, in the Forex market. It may feel like me apply some, some funny, you know, tactics, banning a bookie and all that. Well, well, I, I, nothing happened. So we have, um, a, we have new people at the helm of affairs at, at CBN. If we can get these people, we know, you know, one thing about Nigeria is that most times, eh, I don't know, we, fi we find it hard to name names. You know, very, very hard to name names because the people who are doing this, are not to. They're not ghosts. I mean, they are not ghosts. They are not ghosts. They are people we know. We see them. Well, why is it that the system cannot deal with them severely? It's that political will that I'm praying that the present administration can, you know, you know, can wield, get these people involved, arrest them. Once it's done, we don't have a problem. I mean, some people cannot be bigger than the system and be running the show over and over again and we crowd. I, there are lots of factors the, piling pressure on the um, on the uh, Naira. But first and foremost, there are speculators, and you cannot take away the speculators from this. the system. The, first and foremost, you have to deal with the speculators first. Hmm. And who are the speculators? They are not ghosts. They decide what happened at the forex foreign exchange market. They are powerful people, we know, but they cannot be powerful in the state. And on this, on this state stands up and say, enough is, let's start calling names. If we have the muzzle to do that, what is sense of peace? <coughs> it's not rocket science. It's not rocket science. Majority of what we consume, we don't manufacture. That's another one. Yeah, that, well, well that, that's another factor. Uh, I think uh, if the government can live up to its word by saying that Nigerians should eat or consume what they produce. That is very, very important. But like he said, we have to look at one thing. Some people, because of the bad system we have operated over the years, they have cornered the Nigerian economy. Cornered in the sense that they determine the value of the Naira. They determine a lot of things because of the illicit fund they have gotten from the system. If 80% or 70% of man manufacturers in Nigeria today can assess Forex at the official rate, and they, are, they use the money for what it is meant for, I think the exactly. for, what it's meant for. For, for what it is meant for, we won't be in this level now. But those people who have access, who have perverted the system, who have cornered the system, are the people who are buying the dollars and stashing it abroad. That is the problem we have in Nigeria. And like he said, nobody should be powerful or bigger than the state. Look at what is happening to Trump in America now. Yes, people say we should not compare ourselves. But we are competing in the same world. You see, we are operating in a global village, exactly. global economy village. So the government should be more powerful than the people. Nobody can be powerful no than the state. You are. So we, I think the government, the central bank, and the governing authority should, with the big stick, 
and whoever is responsible for sabotaging Nigeria's economy. Because when you sabotage Nigeria's economy, you are against the Nigerian state. They should deal with them. Adam, just making so get proclamation. There. Other, other things we have, have in place. I have Yunus from Abuja. Thank you for joining us, Yunus. All right, go ahead, please. Yeah, I'm still trying to contribute to the issue of the forex volatility. All right, go ahead. The reality is beyond the issue of speculators. When most of the construction firms in Nigeria today are non Nigerian companies, most of the companies, construction companies in Nigeria today are non Nigeria companies. When they pay them, these people will still look for dollars to take their money out. So until we try to patronize our people, until we try to make use of Nigerians' professionals, we can't people try to come to this country, take a big contract, you pay them in Naira, they have to take their money out. So it's, not, it's not only the speculators. I think the government itself has to look inward and try to patronize Nigerian companies. Thank you. Thank you, Yunus. The, the biggest factor, the biggest factor, the biggest factor is, you know, importation of oil. You can imagine the number of Nigerians that we consume for oil, use for oil, and that uh, major um, product is what everybody right. wants to have access to. So it will put pressure on the dollars when the marketers are looking for money to bring in for oil. And we're not refining we are not producing again, our, what we are using again, again so listen, in terms of uh, again, premium motor spirits. Again, this is man made. Again, this is man Just as he said, he mentioned foreigners coming to the country. I mean, having companies and all that. It's, yeah. See, it's what they see on ground. I don't, I, I don't know. The, I don't know how to put this adage. You know, the rat in the house. You know, hmm. it gives the one coming into the house. You know, the topography of the. You know. If they come in here and they see that the system is watertight, you know, there are certain things they can do. There are guidelines and strict ones for that matter that this and this is what you do here. But in Nigerian system, there are some loopholes that we need to plug. When they come here and, they, and notice that this is how it's operated, most of, it, of course, they know nothing about the country. It's what you tell them because they have indigenous people working with them. So, no, don't worry, this is, don't worry, I'll show you the way. It's just, majority of our problem, apart from the forex or whatever, it's man-made. Majority of our problem is by us. And it's swelled by corruption. Corruption again, corruption, cor once we tackle it, we get this thing done. It's not hard to do. That's just the way if you, you sit in a chair and maybe as a minister, a, a permanent com secretary comes, you know nothing about the system because you've not worked in that ministry. But as a new minister, the PS comes and tells you, okay, no, you see that money, this is how we share it. <laughs> what do you do? You remember Adenike Grange? Oh, yes, so you know what I happened? And then I think about, um, uh, 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 Bassinger's daughter was um, in the Senate then as a Senate committee chairman on health. And you saw that scandal then. He said, this is how we do it here. And he said, okay, no. Okay, from the, if you want to, if you must do it, from the gate man to everybody. She knows nothing about it. So we need to look at these things holistically. Exactly. It's, it's the same thing when it comes to Forex. These are man-made. Our problem in this country, and as I said it. again, once you have the political way to tackle it, send some people to jail, and you see, and be mean about it. All right. Don't look at faces. We have Gabriel from Delta State. Thank you for joining us, Gabriel. Hello. Good evening. Yes. Hello. Go ahead, please. Hello? Go ahead, Gabriel. I can hear you. Hello? Yes, Gabriel. Okay. So, we're talking about importation of oil and um, hope for a refinery. Dangote refinery is coming up. Worry refinery in the river. Well, I think, I think the most interesting aspect is uh, the decision of the NNPC. They have not denied it, though, mm -hmm. that the management of the Portacourt refinery is going to be consigned to the private sector. Mm -hmm. That is better. Good to prevent the civil servants from damaging. This, they will damage it all the way again and we'll back we'll to again, yeah. Let us repair the four refineries. 
grade one in uh, uh, Cardinal has not refined anything in the last 20 years. Let us package them, refine them, put them in the be best position, and contract it out mm -hmm. and share the particular. You see that those things will function. It will function. So it is when we do that, combined with the Dangote, and, and, and I learned that the federal government is also mm -hmm. issuing new licenses. New, licenses, yeah. new, new foreign investors are interested in refining fuel in Nigeria. Mind that you, will reduce Nigeria's the gas reserve mm -hmm. is much more than oil. So to every refinery that we have in Nigeria, we should also refine, mm -hmm. liquefied natural gas mm -hmm. to boost our mm -hmm. incomes. Mm -hmm. Because except until we do this, Dangote refinery was established for business. Still in business. And okay. government has no business in business. So all the refineries we have in Nigeria, we should put them into private hands and run them as a business. And things change. And things will change. Things will change. We should not... Feel that because Dango refinery is coming, the price will come. They're not going to give us free fuel, of course. The, the refinery was built with money, and the man is a businessman. Mm. So <laughs> let us there be competitor. We should not. And another thing with Nigeria is that we should not create monopoly in any sector mm -hmm. of the Nigerian economy. We have made some people billionaires because the government allowed monopoly, monopoly to thrive, yeah. turned them into a monopoly. And I think Nigeria is a country of free market economy. So people should be free to do their business without let or hindrance. It is then that the Nigerian people can have the value for the money they are paying. If I am paying 500 naira for a liter of oil, let me know that mm -hmm. it is worth it. And government should develop infrastructure that Lagos State is doing. I want to see many states building rail line. Beside Lagos, I want to see Roads. River State building two rail lines or four. I want to see Kano State doing the same thing. I want to see Oyo State doing the same thing. It will survive. So when we do all these things, we remove a lot of people on public transportation. A lot of people are riding cars that are not supposed to be riding cars. It's not as if somebody is preaching mm -hmm. about poverty. You have effective transportation system. When you system. have effective public transportation mm -hmm. system, nobody will nobody you have to jump into your car. car when you go out now, you will see that there is practically no difference that the price of oil. You ask yourself, have they actually increased the price of this right now? It is. So let us develop our, use this opportunity to develop our public transportation system. Like Lagos State, Lagos State has for now. Rain, good, water, transport. You know, Lagos is always on the, in the league. The, air, the, air, the, the airport will soon come on stream. So let us do this thing so that we can actually, for us to expect that we'll, we'll start buying fuel at 100 naira. It's not possible it. again. I don't think it is possible. Free market economy. Because it's a, we are a subject of the international market. Do you think the, um, the president, would, by floating the dollars, as in what uh, the, he announced and do you think yes, the purpose has not been defeated? That before we had the gap of um, the official price used to be 400 and something, and uh, the one at the black market was 700 and um, something. Now I can't even distinguish the official from the one in the parallel market. But the parallel market is saying 1,300 as at yesterday. And a lot of Nigerians are panicking. I'm sure the president himself is perplexed. Like, what's going on? He's part of us, you know. I can't be everywhere himself. You know, when things like this happen, I'm sure he pick the phone to call the CPM governor. What's going on? I'm sure, you know, um, he didn't, it's not coming the way he envisaged it. Okay, yeah. let's take this call from Bwinga from Offa in Kwara State. Thank you, Bwinga, for joining us. Hello, Bwinga. Hello, please. All right, go ahead, please. Yes, I'm just trying to contribute. And in some of the issues in the initially, it is so pathetic that uh, this country we don't have the law or rules that guide our organization. Because when you have law and regulation that is not active, understand? If we don't have any of at all at all, because as if we have law in this country, all this is supposed to be done at all. Then I cannot do this just a thing. And go for free because the economy has already come already. So, even if they are not selling to market in the market, they, people are not even on, they are not even skilled people. They know how to manage money. Imagine what is that caliber, the different qualifications that they have, and you crumble the economy of the country. I want to thank you, Bunga. Thank you for your contribution. Mm. Now, the security situation in the Federal Capital Territory, FCT, calls for concern.
to combat this. The Inspector General of Police, Kayo Diagbetokum, has launched the Special Intervention Squad, SIS. Meanwhile, the Minister of Defense, Muhammad Badaru Abubakar, has expressed concern over persistent payment of ransom by Nigerians, particularly the increasing cases of crowdfunding on social media platforms. The minister said such action will worsen.